MSNBC is the place for politics. The Democratic candidates are taking to the airwaves today with new ads in advance of the next big primary day Tuesday. Now listen first to Barack Obama's ad and then we'll show you Hillary Clinton's. I'm Barack Obama and I approve this message. If you are ready for change, then we can go ahead and tell the lobbyists that their days of setting the agenda are over. In the Senate, Barack Obama challenged both parties and passed tough new ethics laws, reining in the power of lobbyists. And he's the only candidate refusing contributions from PACs and Washington lobbyists who have too much power today. They have not funded my campaign, they will not run my White House, and they will not drown out the voices of the American people. It's 3 a.m. and your children are safe and asleep. But there's a phone in the White House and it's ringing. Something's happening in the world. Your vote will decide who answers that call. Whether it's someone who already knows the world's leaders, knows the military, someone tested and ready to lead in a dangerous world. It's 3 a.m. and your children are safe and asleep. Who do you want answering the phone? I'm Hillary Clinton and I approve this message. Sarah Murray is with the Wall Street Journal, and John Heileman contributes to New York Magazine. It's great to see you both today. John, that ad continues to reinforce the idea that Obama is not ready to be commander-in-chief. So I want to play, I mean, the, he keeps getting smacked around about this. Here's his response. We've seen these ads before. You're, they're usually the kind that play upon people's fears and try to scare up votes. Uh, I don't think these ads will work this time because the question is not about picking up the phone. The question is, what kind of judgment will you exercise when you pick up that phone? In many ways, this is the classic argument, the classic back and forth we've been seeing for the last year or so. Is it resonating with voters? Well, I'm not sure that it's an argument that is going to work all that well in a Democratic primary, where uh, the questions around national security tend to revolve around the Iraq War, and where, to a large extent, the Democratic primary voters are on Barack Obama's side on that question. Um, I, I think the Clinton campaign seriously believes that, that their candidate is a lot better prepared for being commander-in-chief than, than, than Senator Obama is, but it's not clear to me that this argument has worked so far, and it's not clear to me that it's going to work in these closing days in Ohio and Texas. All right, no matter what voters think, it's clear that they are shelling out big bucks to one or both of these candidates because the money involved here over February is astonishing. Sarah, Senator Clinton raised more than 35 million bucks in February. Uh, we were hearing that Obama may have raised more than 50 million dollars. What's going on in terms of the excitement, the energy, and, and the money that's in this race? Well, these are also the same numbers we're hearing, um, and you're just seeing that people still believe that there is a race. People believe that Clinton does have a chance to win here, um, and I think that that is evidenced by the 200,000 new contributors that she got this month. And really, these numbers are just astounding as far as a month of campaign contributions. And, and, and Sarah, do you think that the um, the finance the finances follow these ads, that these ads get people geared up, or do you think they're already geared up and saying, okay, I'm ready to shell out my own personal money? Especially, it's, it, what seems crazy to me is that even in times when we're seeing consumer sentiment down and people worried about the economy, that they're willing to give money to these political campaigns. Well, it's hard to say exactly what is causing these people to be fired up. It very well could be the ads. It could be um, the Obama momentum, just, you know, seeing 11 straight wins. That's enough to get a lot of people fired up. It could be seeing Hillary Clinton donate $5 million to her campaign. That also very likely had a yeah. big effect. In fact, John, do you think that this works for her being vulnerable, being behind in the polls, being seen as um, being outspent and out and fund rate in terms of fundraising, uh, just being walloped by Barack Obama, does that put her in a good role? Well, I, I think that, I mean, being walloped is never a great thing, but at the same time, it's certainly true that she has seen an upspike in her in her fundraising after she gave that money to her own campaign uh, in a surprising way. It's clear that there are a lot of people who, throughout this campaign, who have thought that when Hillary Clinton has been down and when it seemed like she's been close to being driven from the race, that that has engendered a kind of positive response, both in terms of the voters and what they've done at the polls and in terms of the fundraising. But it doesn't surprise me all that much in some ways. I mean, these numbers are astonishing. It's true. Yeah. But it's, it's, but it's also been the case that for more than a year, we have seen crowds on the Democratic side that have been uh, historically unprecedented for a primary. I mean, you never will see primary yeah. crowds a year out in the multi-thousands, as you've seen on both sides in this campaign. Yeah, the rock Democratic star, arena-sized yeah. crowds. It's crazy. All right, Absolutely. John, Sarah, thank you very much.
We are keeping our eye right now on what the two candidates are doing. Barack Obama just started speaking at Brownsville, Texas. He's at the University of Texas there in Brownsville. Hillary Clinton is also in Texas. She's holding a rally in Waco, and, and she's still speaking at this point. So we're keeping a close eye on these two candidates and what they have to say today. And, of course, Hillary Clinton meets the blogosphere. Her blog on the Huffington Post getting a lot of reaction from both supporters and critics. We'll talk about that. MSNBC, the place for politics.